Okay, move out. The conflict in Southeast Asia demands the ultimate immobility. It is a war of movement, movement of men in arms in battle, mass delivery of heavy material from across the sea. Rapid resupply of food and ammunition, constantly flowing lines of transportation. Vietnam with its uncharted jungles, mountains and vast wetlands, its monsoons and torrid temperatures, is a hard and primitive land. Efficient movement of men and supplies in this environment is one of the biggest and continuous problems ever faced by man. Rising to meet the needs are the men of the United States Army Transportation Corps. Fort Eustis on Mulberry Island juts outward into the historic waters of the James River like a clenched fist guarding the river approaches to Colonial Williamsburg. This 9,000 acre installation in the state of Virginia is one of the most important military reservations in America. It is the home of the United States Army Transportation Corps. Acquired by the Army during World War I, the post became known as Fort Eustis, Virginia and served as a training area for coast artillery men. The historic port is now the United States Army Transportation Center, and the world's largest transportation school now occupies much of the land. Brigadier General Abraham Eustis, a native-born Virginian and a noted Indian fighter of the 1830s, is the man after whom the port is named. The indomitable spirit of this man seems somehow to live on in the men of the Transportation Corps. Down through the years, they have moved our nation's army and its guns and gear by every mode of travel known to man. This memorial is dedicated to the men of the Army Transportation Corps, who have always discharged their duty with highest honor and devotion to purpose. The transportation school at Fort Eustis has expanded its training program tremendously. At the peak of the Korean War, the school graduated over 7,000 trained experts in one year. This year, more than 35,000 men will leave the center as qualified aircraft repairmen, seamen, stevedores, railroaders, and motor transport personnel. To provide more efficient teaching, the school was among the pioneers in modern closed-circuit military educational television. Instructors like this one record black and white videotapes of some 130 subjects per year. Utilizing recorded TV lectures and a variety of motion pictures, classes throughout the school view many thousands of educational television programs per year. One of the most important courses for officer students at the Transportation Officer Candidate School is that which deals with the subject of traffic management. The job of deciding how men and material will be transported from one place to another. The transportation manager today must not only make travel arrangements for the Army's personnel and their baggage, but for the transportation of all the military equipment and supplies these men will need when they reach their destination overseas. Timetables must be set up to assure delivery of troops and equipment when they are needed. Efficient use of available transport must be determined 
after considering what is to be moved and where it is going. To help transportation managers make vital decisions relating to time, distance, transport availability and capacity, they are taught to organize and use a movements control board. The data provided by these movements control boards must be analyzed in relation to the many requirements of the transportation management problem under consideration. Electronic computers used as a transportation management tool provide fast, detailed information. Learning to be a movement control officer and fulfilling the duties of that assignment is one of the most complex and difficult jobs for Army transportation today. Whether transportation is by land, sea, or air, there is cost involved. This is another factor which the transportation manager has to consider when issuing priorities and selecting modes of transport. Like the travel agent, who arranges your trip to fit your budget, military transportation managers must plan all details and accomplish the movement of Army personnel and cargo within reasonable limits of cost. Considering the Army's needs in Vietnam and the critical mission to provide strategic mobility all the way to Southeast Asia, the lessons learned here at Fort Eustis are vital to Army transportation managers throughout the world. Their swift and efficient response to transportation requirements is essential to the timely deployment of our nation's fighting men and the countless tons of logistic material which is needed to support them in Vietnam or wherever else they may be. In every sense, traffic management and the control of movement in all modes of transport comprise the very heart of the United States Army's mobility posture. So efficient have these Army transportation men become that their motto today is anywhere, anytime, on time. Army transportation depends heavily upon motor transport operations to accomplish most of its combat support overland transportation missions. A great variety of vehicles fulfill the Army's needs. Sometimes it's a bus to take men from their base to a train or a jeep to carry the military police as they set out on patrol. It may be a multi-ton trailer truck to deliver supplies. an ambulance to move patients from one place to another. Often it's a large truck to bring in whatever will be needed tomorrow. Proper utilization of the Army's motor vehicles is a fundamental function of the transportation center at Fort Eustis. The future motor transporters are taught to plan and coordinate their operations from start to finish. On the job in Vietnam, the men of the truck units are everywhere. They do everything and anything to keep the Army rolling. Special purpose vehicles, like the mule, add to the flexibility of the transportation support mission in Vietnam and speed up delivery of supplies to fighting units in the forward area. So effective has the motor transport effort been, that the enraged Viet Cong try to destroy the men and machines which provide this transportation service. These scenes show the motor pull a Tansanut following a VC mortar attack during the night. Despite attacks such as this and the attempts to ambush our convoys on jungle roads, Army transporters continue to form up and move out the vital lifelines of rolling trucks and other vehicles needed in Vietnam. Railroads have always been of paramount importance to the Army. Here at the Transportation Center at Fort Eustis, there are some 41 miles of railroad track, and within this system, the center is capable of teaching every aspect of railroad operation. The Army's Transportation Railway Service has an impressive record of tonnage moved during World War II and again in Korea. Under wartime conditions, 
Army railroaders are often called upon to assist to operate foreign railway systems. Although most of the world's railroads use diesel electric locomotives, our military railway men must be able not only to operate these trains, but must learn as much as possible about the different types of railway equipment which they may encounter. In the maintenance shop at the Transportation Center's rail yard, soldiers are trained on upkeep procedures, such as periodic inspections and adjustments of electrical components of a diesel locomotive. There are still a large number of countries where steam locomotives are the only railroad engines being used. Because of this, soldiers at the transportation center are taught to operate and take care of these older, more picturesque locomotives. Transportation rail units have locomotive engineers, brakemen, conductors, and even skilled repairmen who are capable of repairing everything from a leaky steam locomotive boiler to a broken car wheel. Through the Fort Eustis military railway system, transportation soldiers have the opportunity to become skilled in railroading with both steam and diesel electric power. These highly trained army railroaders are essential to the movement of large contingents of troops and endless shipments of heavy military material. Handling the millions of tons of military cargo in Southeast Asia ports are vital areas of responsibility for army transportation. Here at Fort Eustis, soldiers of the Transportation Center are learning every phase of cargo handling. While the ships used to carry cargo and troops are not Army operated, many of the overseas ocean terminals are. Army transportation personnel direct and handle cargo movement, shipping schedules, and passenger traffic. In South Vietnam, most major seaports are operated by Army transportation. Before they can load or unload cargo, the iron men of the waterfront, the army stevedores, must be trained to perfection in the various methods of cargo handling. At the third Fort Winch Farm, the powerful electric and steam winches, similar to those of an ocean-going vessel, provide experience for the trainees, as they learn by handling dummy cargo loads. From here, they move to a training device known as the land ship Never Sail. Built in the waters of Skiff's Creek, the Never Sail is a concrete and steel composite of a freighter which has a combination of all the cargo handling gear and hatches found aboard vessels carrying military cargo. The cargo handling drills are more precise now. Many hours of instruction have gone by, and these Army cargo handlers are at last ready for discharge operations. After four weeks of intensive training with all types of military cargo, Loading procedures have been masted and cargo was flowing smoothly from dock side to ship hold. The Army's longshoremen and stevedores have become the most highly skilled military cargo handlers in the annals of shipping history. In addition to pier side discharge of heavy cargo, floating cranes can be used to transfer freight to barges or lighters, which are then taken into the shallow waters where the ocean going freighters cannot venture. Train operators and other crewmen trained here at the transportation center carry out these operations expertly.
Within the environs of the seaport, the Army has need of a wide variety of harbor craft, lighters, and landing craft. Crews to operate these Army vessels receive thorough training in seamanship and navigation. Here in the transportation school, the men learn to identify light combinations displayed by various types of vessels traveling at night. How to use a sextant and determine the ship's position at sea. And in the school's modern planetarium, the science of celestial navigation. A large part of the marine training program is given over to voyages along the coastal waters of the Atlantic where transportation trainees get practical experience in piloting and navigation. They learn to handle the vessel under all kinds of traffic conditions. These men must complete 18 weeks of training. They are then eligible for appointment as marine warrant officers and, depending upon the courses studied, are awarded licenses as masters, mates, or marine engineers. Then they are ready to serve aboard Army transportation vessels. At nearby Fort Story, a sub-installation of Fort Eustis, other transportation men are taught to maintain and operate amphibious cargo lighters known as larks. In places where there are no docking facilities, such as parts of Vietnam, these craft, capable of delivering cargoes across the beach, are essential to logistical support operations. In every way, Army transportation delivers the supplies needed by our fighting forces. Delivery is made where it is needed, when it is needed. In Vietnam, at Camran Bay, the 339-foot beach discharge lighter, John U.D. Page, moves a shipment of heavy vehicles. It is Army Transportation's largest version of the roll-on, roll-off type of craft. In constant use in Vietnam are the LCUs, Landing Craft Utility. These ramp-loading vessels have good capacity and perform a wide variety of logistic support missions. So efficient are the beach delivery operations that the once barren sands of Cameron Bay have been transformed into the largest and most active military supply depot in the world. In the cauldron of war, the task of managing and operating a major ocean terminal, such as the port at Saigon, requires the utmost in transportation know-how. In Vietnam, this is the gateway for multi-millions of tons of equipment and supplies needed for the conflict. All of the training received by the transportation men at Fort Eustis is paying off now. They are meeting magnificently the high standards for which the service has become famous. Movement by air is the most rapidly developing dimension of the war in Vietnam. The skies over this troubled land are alive with helicopters. These rotary wing aircraft are transforming men and guns into striking power with minimum loss of time. The Army's helicopters today represent the backbone of tactical mobility in Vietnam. And keeping these aircraft in the air is the job of Army transportation. From the transportation school at Fort Eustis come growing legions of young flight engineers, aircraft repairmen, maintenance test pilots, helicopter crew chiefs, turbine engine and other component repairmen. In this age of air transportable everything, 
Ground commanders are employing more aircraft and the men to maintain them. Army transportation is responding quickly through greater emphasis on the helicopter maintenance and support training program. The military helicopter is a vastly complicated piece of equipment. It is an expensive machine. Learning to maintain it, repair it, and modify it for special missions is a difficult undertaking, even for those who are technically inclined. There is much to be learned, and time for study is limited. Yet despite the urgency, the breed of men who come to the transportation school do master the broad spectrum of technical subjects necessary to become a qualified rotary wing aircraft repairman. Helicopter engines are intricate marvels of engineering for which the soldiers require intensive training if they are to perform the prescribed maintenance procedures to keep the aircraft flying. In the engine simulator class, students are given a realistic demonstration of aircraft engine function. Engines are often overtaxed in operations in Vietnam. There, humidity, dust, and exceptionally high temperatures affect engine capability. This unique training aid is used to teach young troubleshooters the warning signs given by the engine and instruments when it is beginning to malfunction and to help future repairmen identify these troubles and rectify them. Maintenance training is conducted on every type of helicopter flown by the Army. Many are dismantled, overhauled, and reassembled here at the transportation school. The Chinook helicopter, which is used in Vietnam as a prime mover of heavy equipment and large numbers of men, is one of the most important tactical rotary wing aircraft in service today. This workforce of the air is given exhaustive study by the men who will keep it flying in Vietnam. The design and function of the ungainly helicopter rotors is of paramount importance. In this rotor assembly lies the secret of helicopter flight. To perform the seemingly impossible feats of lifting and transporting tremendous loads over jungles and mountains, the helicopter's rotors must be maintained in perfect condition. Long hours are spent here in the rotor repair shop until the student has a complete understanding of this vital helicopter component. The Army's fixed-wing aircraft are learned inside and out. Planes like the Bird Dog are mainly used as an artillery spotting plane and to guide attacking jet fighters to hidden Viet Cong ground positions. And the Beaver, a ruggedly built Army aviation utility plane. Here at Felker Army Airfield, at Fort Eustis, the transportation school familiarizes the men with actual flight operations. Now with a full understanding of aircraft function and operating procedures, these men are learning to live and fly with the Army's armada of fighting helicopters, just as it will be in Vietnam. Men who may later be selected as flying crewmen learn to ride shotgun, using machine guns from the doorway of the helicopter. When fired upon by Viet Cong snipers in some future jungle operation, the door gunner's ability to hit what he aims at will be vital to the safety of the helicopter. The demands of jungle warfare are such that the rapid movement by air of heavy equipment and even artillery is often imperative if the enemy is to be blocked and destroyed. Always the well-trained ground crews who are the sinews of the air mobility support team must be ready to go into action.
No matter how much time is spent training, the actual job in Vietnam is more demanding than the graduates of the transportation school expect. The off-times crude working conditions on jobs like dismantling damaged aircraft, the ever-present urgency of combat operations, the heat and humidity, the dust or mud, all combine to test a maintenance man's mettle. Without the thorough indoctrination received by these men at Fort Eustis, the mission of providing instant and continuing air mobility might not be accomplished. As it is, the men of Army Transportation are ready and responsive to every requirement which arises in the arduous course of daily operations in Vietnam. For sheer determination and the uncanny ability to cope with the unexpected, there never has been a military organization more richly endowed than the United States Army Transportation Corps. In the air, as on the land and on the sea, the motto of the Army Transport is anywhere, anytime, on time. To assure the continuing high standards of mobility which the Army must have in the years to come, Engineers of the Combat Developments Command Transportation Agency are conducting a never-ending search for newer and faster ways of transporting people and cargoes across the face of the earth. More flexibility and maneuverability to enable men to conquer the hazards of land and sea and air. Where surface mobility is impractical, the men of Army Transportation have turned to the air. The helicopter has given us the flexibility of movement in battle never before dreamed of by armies of the past. The concept of air mobility has revolutionized the makeup of our ground forces. And still, transportation researchers of the Army Aviation Material Laboratories are seeking easier ways of delivering equipment and supplies through the atmosphere around us. When the helicopters of today can be speeded up many times and still hover motionless when desired, a great new dimension will have been added to man's mobility in the sky. Through faster, more efficient means of transportation, all mankind will find more time in which to enjoy the abundant life in the years ahead. To all of this, the men of the Army Transportation Corps are contributing as they daily accomplish their mission and move the United States Army ever forward toward new horizons.